Hello, everybody. Hola, buenas tardes. Uh, welcome to this Indivisible Ben event. Bienvenidos a este evento de Ben Indivisible. This is a uh, BIPOC roundtable with candidates to the Oregon House and Senate. Este es una conversación con miembros uh, de las comunidades de color con los candidatos para, la, uh, para ser representantes y senadores del estado de Oregon. Um, um, my name is Joanne, y I am participating as a volunteer with Indivisible Ben. Mi nombre es Joanne, y estoy participando como voluntaria con Indivisible Ben. Um, voy a estar interpretando. I will be translating this event, so it will be bilingual. Va a ser bilingüe. Uh, and now I would like to introduce you our uh, host and moderator for the evening, Caterina. Ahora les voy a, a presentar a nuestra uh, presentadora de la noche, Caterina. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Kathy. I'm here as a volunteer of the community at large. Uh, muy buenas tardes a todos. Um, yo soy Kathy Varguil y estoy aquí representando como una voluntaria de la comunidad uh, para esta presentación. Um, Antes de empezar, le vamos a hablar un poco um, sobre las reglas um, de esta discusión. Uh, so before we begin, we're going to go over some of the, um, just kind of the guidelines for um, this conversation today. Um, the first hour of uh, this conversation is going to involve uh, preset questions to our candidates, um, Eileen, Jason, and Emerson uh, here with us today. Um, la primera parte de esta presentación um, y eh, va a consistir en uh, unas preguntas predeterminadas que se le va a hacer a nuestros candidatos que están presentes aquí hoy, um, Jason, Eileen y Emerson. Um, y después uh, vamos a tener, um, creo que son media hora, eh, para tener preguntas uh, de las personas que están aquí eh, uniéndose a esta conversación que le tengan a los candidatos. Um, after we are done with this first part of the, uh, the round table with these present questions, we're going to have an opportunity uh, to field some questions from uh, our BIPOC community that is present with us here today. Um, Joanne, I don't know if you, um, we can go straight into, um, yes, let's go into the first. Okay. Entonces, um, antes de empezar esta presentación, vamos a tener um, un reconocimiento que en el territorio que estamos aquí ahora mismo um, tiene residentes um, muchos más antiguos y personas que siguen viviendo aquí hoy en día. Um, Bend and all of Central Oregon is occupied territory, traditionally of the Warm Springs, Wasco, Paiute, and other native tribes stretching from the snow-capped snow summits of the Cascade Mountains to the palisaded cliffs of the Deschutes River and beyond. We honor and thank them, and we hope um, that our work disrupts and dismantles colonialism beyond this point moving forward. Want me to do the Spanish as well, Joanne? Sorry, no pude encontrar el, el micrófono. Um, sabemos que todo el territorio de Oregon Central es un territorio que le pertenece a las comunidades muy antiguas. Es ha sido un territorio ocupado, pero que le pertenece a las uh, comunidades de Warm Spring, Wasco, Patul y otras uh, tribus nativas. Uh, los territorios se extienden desde las uh, cumbres nevadas de las montañas de los Cascades hasta los encantilados del río de Schutz y más allá. Los honramos y les agradecemos y esperamos que nuestro trabajo interrumpa y desmantele el colonialismo más allá de este momento y en el futuro. Antes de empezar, or, sorry, I'm switching back and forth between English and Spanish. <laughs> um, before beginning, um, I'm going to ask that everyone um, present here today for a conversation introduce themselves, um, their name, uh, pronouns and uh, from what sector of the community or uh, from an organization you're here on behalf of today. Uh, so I'll begin. I'm uh, Katharina, usually go by Kathy uh, Barguil. I'm a community at large member. Um, I'm an engineer here at the city, um, but I'm also um, a resident of the Latinx community here in Bend. Um, my pronouns are she, her, they, them, and I'm uh, very excited to be here with all of you. 
and I'll pass the mic on to uh, Joanne to reintroduce herself pretty quickly. Or, yeah, go ahead. Gracias, thank you. Uh, hola, mi nombre es Joanne y yo soy miembro de la comunidad. Estoy participando como voluntaria de Ben Indivisible. Hi, my name is Joanne and I am a member of the community participating as a volunteer with Indivisible Ben. Our candidates would like to go next. Oh, BIPOC, sorry. Naomi, how about you? Hi, my name is Suki Mrokomet. I'm a member of the Ben community. My background is uh, in education. And uh, I'm also part of Embrace Bend and Restorative Justice and Equity Group. Um, should I choose the next person? Yes, please. How about Renee Ruiz? Hi, Naomi, long time no see. <laughs> um, hello, my name is Renee Ruiz, and I am um, a resident of Bend. I am the labor representative for or um, Oregon Nurses Association in Central Oregon and also um, president of the Central Labor, um, the Central Oregon Central Labor chapter. Um, and my pronouns are she, her, hers. And Terrell, would you like to go next? Can you see me? Can you hear me? You can? Yep, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> well, my name's Terrell Young. I'm a resident here of uh, in Oregon, uh, originally from Virginia, so I'm a long way from home. Uh, I'm in a group Embrace Ben and Restorative Justice. I'm a social activist here, and I'm just here to see what candidates have to say about what can we do about some of the situations here in Central Oregon. Welcome. And um, last but not least, I'm Katia. Uh, I participated here just to get to know our candidates and see what they uh, what they know about our work community and what we can both. I, I don't know in any ways that we can help. Uh, Pick up and ask questions if uh, something happened. But I, yeah, I work for Ben Sparks and Red. I'm still up in the community outreach there. And thank you for doing this, Ren, and everybody in the community. Gracias, thank you. Um, esta es nuestra representación de miembros de la comunidad. This is our representation of community members to engage in conversation. Uh, and learn more. Que quieren participar en conversación y aprender más. Um, now we have questions. Tenemos preguntas. Y para eso, Caterina nos va a ayudar. Antes de eso, vamos a conocer a nuestros candidatos. Um, before we go into the question section, we're going to hear from our candidates. Uh, so I will just go down in alphabetical order. Um, Eileen, uh, if you could please introduce yourself. You have about two minutes. Thank you. I'm Eileen Kiley. I am the candidate for state senate. I'm here to disrupt the state senate. Um, as you can probably tell, I'm a middle-aged white woman who was raised in the suburbs with a lot of white privilege. Um, this has been a learning time for me. Hola, mi nombre es Eileen. Estoy viviendo para el Senado del Estado de Oregon. Um, como pueden ver, yo soy una mujer blanca de clase media y vengo a interrumpir la cultura del Estado. Thank you. Um, I, this has been a learning year for me. Um, I've been learning my whole life. Uh, when I was first, from, I was a financial executive for one of the largest manufacturers in the world. And when I was first promoted to that rank, um, one of the best pieces of advice I got was to hire for diversity. Because if I only hired people who thought and looked like me, those were the only solutions I was going to come up with. In order to come up with the best solutions, I needed people who saw the world differently than I did. Um, 
Bueno, yo también estoy aprendiendo. Uh, trabajé como manager de una um, compañía consultora muy grande y estaba encargada de manejar la diversidad. Entonces aprendí que la mejor manera era incorporar personas que tienen una, un distinto punto de vista al mío. Como well, progresiva, I thought I was doing pretty well. And I have learned through these last years of the Trump presidency that I have not done anywhere near well enough. I'm here tonight to talk to you uh, about what I have learned so far in my life and um, to learn more from you about where we need to go from here. Because the diversity is our strength and that's what we need to take to Salem in order to really be represented. Thank you. Um, bueno, en, estamos, um, pensé yo que estaba haciendo bien, pero me he dado cuenta que hacer bien no ha sido suficiente y que hay mucho que aprender y estoy aquí para pues aprender de ustedes y para traer esta información a Salem. Gracias. Thanks so much, Eileen, and I'm going to uh, hand the mic off to Emerson. Thanks, Kathy. Uh, thank you for having me here tonight. My name is Emerson Levy and I am running for House District 53, which covers Redmond, Bend, and Sun River. Hola, buenas noches. Gracias por darme la oportunidad de estar aquí. Mi nombre es Emerson Levy y yo estoy corriendo para el, um, el distrito uh, de representante 53, que cubre um, partes de Bend, uh, Sisters, uh, Redmond, uh, I'm, I'm grateful to be here tonight and one of the, I, um, I really want to listen and learn and offer my viewpoints as an ally, but also to hear from the community to see how we can do better in the legislature and better serve um, the community. Y bueno, estoy muy agradecida de estar aquí. Estoy participando, queriendo ser aliada y poder aprender más uh, de la comunidad pues para traer esta información uh, al Senado, al, al, um, a Salem, a la capital de Oregon. One of the biggest issues on my platform is that of being a bit of a reformer when it comes to money and politics, because when we have too much money in politics, our state representatives are acting as uh, lo essentially lobbyists, and it leaves um, marginalized voices out. Uh, y uno de los... Um, uh, problemas que he estado yo encabezando con mi campaña es el uh, problema de la reformación de fondos en la política que convierte a nuestros representantes en lobbies que están uh, pues avanzando um, la cultura y la, los valores de, um, de las compañías. Thank you. I'm, I'm excited to talk to you guys and I am excited to listen. Uh, gracias, estoy contenta de estar aquí y contenta también de escuchar. Thanks so much, Emerson. And uh, Jason, please go ahead. Uh, thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Jason Krupp. He, uh, him, his. I'm running to represent Ben in the State House, House District 54. Um, you know, I have had sort of two parts of my career. The first part of my career, I was a public defender. Hola, mi nombre es Jason y yo estoy representando al distrito del uh, representante 54. Uso los pronombres él y bueno, um, parte de mi historia es de haber trabajado uh, como defendo, como defensor uh, público. And the second part of my career has been as a deputy district attorney here in Deschutes County. And much of my career has been involved in our juvenile justice system. Um, involving cases of, uh, involving juvenile court and, and kids in foster care. Y la segunda parte de mi carrera se ha um, involucrado más en hacer um, un diputado de uh, justicia en donde me he involucrado con jóvenes que están uh, pasando por el sistema criminal uh, y he estado pues trabajando con ellos. And right, be right before I decided to run, I, I had a case, I was in court with this young man and I'd known this young man for, for a number of years through my work in the juvenile system. Uh, I knew this young man had struggled with addiction issues. And I knew this young man hadn't been able to finish high school. Y antes de empezar mi candidatura, uh, tuve un, um, 
una experiencia que me impactó con un joven de la comunidad que ha tenido problemas de adicción, que yo lo he conocido desde aquí, la, como, desde la comunidad, y que no pudo terminar el colegio uh, secundario y la preparatoria. And this young man was asked, you know, what did he want for his life? And what he told us was this most recent time he was in jail, he had missed his daughter's first birthday. And that when he was growing up, his dad wasn't around very much either. And what he said is, what he said is what he wanted for himself was to be a father to his, to his daughter. Y esta um, última vez más reciente, uh, cuando estuvo en la cárcel, se le preguntó, ¿qué es el, qué es el deseo? ¿Qué es el sueño que tú tienes? Y él dijo que él deseaba estar allí para el cumpleaños de su hija porque él creció con un padre que no estuvo allí para sus cumpleaños. Um, y él siente que lo más importante que él quería era uh, celebrar y estar uh, con sus hijos, ser padre. And I, realized, and I left court realizing how much I had in common with that young man, that we shared the same determination to be good parents to our children. And I left court that day optimistic. Uh, I've seen people in my work make incredible changes in their life, and I believe redemption exists for just about everyone. I also left that court that day thinking about that young man's daughter and wondering if she would have all the supports that she needed to thrive. Um, y ese día me fui de la corte pensando que ese uh, joven y yo tenemos el mismo deseo, uh, los mismos valores, uh, la determinación, el optimismo, Uh, y que yo creo que cada persona uh, uh, se merece uh, según las oportunidades o una uh, redención. Um, él le gustaría, uh, él está pensando cuál es el apoyo que la hija de este joven va a recibir. Entonces son cosas que, um, uh, que lo impactaron cuando él salió de la corte. The COVID pandemic and the uh, recent protests and ongoing protests for racial justice have reinforced that the way things are just isn't good enough. You know, I'm running to represent Ben because I believe we can do better. Better to me means acknowledging our systemic racism and taking re real action to dismantle system systemic racism and the inequities that existed in our state for far too long. Better means making sure we have a fully funded school system so all kids have the chance to be prepared for the future and the chance to thrive. It means making sure everybody has access to affordable health care. Y bueno, entonces estoy pensando, después de ver las uh, protestas y lo que ha pasado con la pandemia del COVID-19, lo que estamos haciendo no es suficiente. Debemos hacer mejores cosas. Y mejorar significa uh, tratar con este sistema de racismo que es sistémico, darle fondos a nuestras escuelas, asegurarnos que las personas tengan uh, seguro médico y cuidado médico. Better means making sure everybody has a roof over their head making sure that we have an economy that works for everyone and making sure that we're taking real action to combat climate change. Thank you so much for having me here this evening. Uh, I believe conversations like we're going to have tonight is going to help us tackle our biggest problems here in Oregon and help move Oregon forward. So I look forward to this conversation and thanks to once again for having me here tonight. Pues es muy importante también que las personas tengan un techo sobre sus cabezas y que la economía uh, sea eh, buena para todos, que tomemos acción en el cambio climático y gracias por la oportunidad uh, para esta conversación. Pienso que estas conversaciones nos ayudan a avanzar. Thank you so much to all of our candidates. We're going to enter now into um... Uh, this first part of the conversation, I'm going to choose one of the questions that we have at random, and um, each of you will have about a minute to respond. Um, that's also um, hopefully time for Joanne to be able to take notes and then be able to translate your response. Um, I'll be keeping tabs on the time as best I can, um, let you know when you have about 15 seconds left. Um, so for our first question, Uh, primero vamos a empezar con el sistema de preguntas. Uh, Caterina va a hacer preguntas, una lista que ya tenemos, y ella va a empezar con la primera pregunta. First question we have here um, is number two. Uh, Joanne, could you bring that up on the presentation?
Uh, so question number two is, what are the current community issues that require special attention when viewed through equity lenses? What do you know about the community's needs? La pregunta número dos es, ¿cuáles son las preocupaciones de la comunidad viéndolas a través de, una, de un lente de equidad? And I will hand the mic off to Emerson to begin. I always forget the mute thing, thank you. Um, again, I'm uh, I'm here to learn what other um, what issues are there to the community. Um, but when I follow the lead of CCC, um, a lot of the issues really turn on uh, child care education, specifically the early childhood equity fund, um, jurisdictional issues with roads. I, I think a great example of that is the um, Albina project in Portland. I feel like that's really highlighted. Um, that jurisdictional road issue. Um, do, do you want me to finish completely? And I, estoy aquí, sorry, I couldn't find my microphone. No podía encontrar el micrófono, perdón. Uh, estoy aquí, bueno, también para aprender, pero siguiendo la guianza de CCC, he visto que algunos de los problemas más importantes en la comunidad es el cuidado de niños, eh, especialmente educación para niños chicos, y también las jurisdicciones en las carreteras. Um, additionally, to, uh, in COVID, I think the uh, um, important for tenant protections across our community, um, youth sentencing reform, and the important passage of the Paid Medical Leave Act. These are all legislative issues that really um, impact the BIPOC community. Um, y bueno, viendo el, el impacto del COVID-19, una de las cosas que podemos hacer es a ayudar a las personas que, que rentan, uh, que están pagando renta, uh, también ver el, el problema de... Um, um, I'm sorry, Emerson, would you repeat that real quick? The last little bit. I think yes. I said uh, the Paid Family Medical Leave Act. Gracias. También muy importante, uh, algo que podemos hacer a nivel uh, legislativo es el pago a las familias para que puedan tomar días libres. And lastly, um, the programs promoting leadership in the BIPOC community and elevating um, BIPOC leaders to be, um, to run for office, um, like through programs mm -hmm. that merge that Kathy and I are in. Y también programas, elevar programas que ayudan las comunidades de color a que participen en el sistema político y social, dándoles entrenamiento y ayuda para que ellos puedan uh, correr y ser uh, uh, oficiales electos. Thank you so much, Emerson. Um, and I'm going to hand this over to Jason, please. Uh, thank you. Well, I think it just on a real fundamental level is there's, there are too many people whose voices are not being heard when it comes to decision making, both on a local level and on a state level. So, I think the most simple thing we can see is that there are voices that have not been counted, and we see it at the local level and at the So, we need to do a better job of making sure everybody is part of the decision making process, that everybody's experiences and concerns are heard so that we can start to um, dismantle the inequities that have existed in our community. That's on a fundamental level. And we need to ensure that people can participate in this process of making decisions, that we change our systems so that it can be equitative, where everyone can participate. In more specific terms, I think we need to do a better job of closing the gap and opportunity to closing the educational opportunities and economic opportunities. You know, we have too many, you know, our high school graduation is rate is, you know, one out of five kids don't graduate high school in the state and that rate's even lower if you're a kid of color. And we know there's incredible disparities in wealth between um, our white community, what was that 15 seconds? Uh, <laughs> our white community and there's a, a real economic gap between our communities of color and our and, uh, people in our white community. And we need to do a better job to to minimize those those gaps and make sure that all people have real access to economic opportunities. Y también, bueno, darnos cuenta de que necesitamos mejores trabajo, mejor educación y una mejor economía. 
Vemos que uh, nuestros estudiantes, uno en cada cinco no se gradúa y eso es peor para jóvenes de color. Uh, la inigualdad económica que vemos entre las comunidades blancas y las comunidades de color es uh, prevalente. Entonces, necesitamos hacer un mejor trabajo. Thank you so much, Jason. And I also just want to clarify the time I'm taking is only for when the candidates speak, not the time it takes for translation. Um, so hopefully that is a little bit, um, yeah, just calms a little, everyone a little bit down on that. Um, and uh, Eileen, please go ahead. Thank you. Um, really, at this point in time, all of our issues need special attention when viewed through an equity lens because um, we haven't done that right now because of our institutions. We are viewing through a white lens. Um, but what we, the community issues that I think are most important right now are um, obviously policing and our justice systems, um, but also our kitchen table issues, education, healthcare, and housing. Um, oh, pause. <laughs> Um, so, una de las cosas que hemos visto, ¿no?, es que ahorita todo necesita apoyo porque no se le ha brindado ese apoyo, uh, porque hemos visto nuestras decisiones a través de un lente blanco, pero no solamente los uh, problemas de policía y de la justicia, reforma uh, judiciaria son importantes, pero también las cosas que nos afectan a diario, como la educación, a la vivienda um, y la comida. So while these kitchen table issues affect all Oregonians, um, BIPOC communities have been disproportionately impacted. Um, one of the principal reasons that I'm running is to help Central Oregon recover from COVID, this economic crisis that is caused by a public health crisis. Our budget and our policies to recover from COVID need to ensure that community co uh, communities of color are at the front of the line, not an afterthought. Estamos viendo que para recuperarnos necesitamos uh, darnos cuenta que las comunidades de color, las negras indígenas y otras comunidades de color están sufriendo desproporcionadamente y que, la, el, um, y que cuando la economía se recupere debemos poner a estas personas afectadas, personas de color, al principio de la línea. Thank you so much um, uh, to everyone. Um, Everyone's doing great. Just want to reassure everyone on the translation. You know, this can be a little iffy sometimes, but no, we're doing good. Um, and I'm going to pick our second question. And that is uh, question number six, Joanne. Uh, okay, question number six. Do you support the decriminalization of homelessness? And what initiatives would you bring to Oregon's legislator? Eh, la pregunta número seis es, ¿apoya la decriminaliz decriminalización de personas sin hogar y qué iniciativas traería a la legislatura de Oregón? And to begin, um, let's start with Jason. Uh, I, I do. Everybody, everybody deserves a place to call home. I mean, hard stop on that. We should not be policing or criminalizing um, people who are right now homeless. Um, we need to do more to make sure that everybody has a stable residence and has that basic stability that they deserve. You know, I think the tackling the affordable housing crisis is an issue that we have to, that we come at from multiple angles. Sí, creo que es muy importante de que todos merecemos una vivienda, un hogar, uh, de que no hay que mandarle a la policía a estas personas que están uh, pasando por esto uh, y que debemos trabajar para tener viviendas estables y que son um, uh, baratas, que la gente las pueda pagar, ¿no? Y uh, no debemos um, uh, poner más prejuicio en esta comunidad. You know, you know, um... So when we come, we tackle the affordable housing crisis from, from multiple angles. One, it means allocating resources to make sure we have emergency shelters for people who are in crisis. It means making sure that we have uh, land use laws and coding um, laws in place so that we can build more dense and more variety of types of housing. And two, making sure that we're creating uh, protections for tenants and uh, pathways for people to have home ownership. 
Y eso significa que debemos atacar esto desde muchos ángulos. Debemos invertir en uh, uh, vivienda de emergencia. Uh, también debemos uh, evaluar las leyes que gobiernan nuestras tierras, también el código que usamos para uh, crear las viviendas y, y también debemos ver cómo vamos a invertir. Thanks, Jason. Um, yep. <laughs> you have seven seconds left, so if you'd like to say anything else, you can, you're free for it. I'll reserve that time for later. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Um, Eileen, please go ahead. Um, of course, I support the decriminalization of, of uh, houselessness. In fact, I thought the Supreme Court already settled this question. Um, you know, housing is both a state and a local issue. And so we need statewide planning goals that include um, the impacts on communities of color and also funding that prioritizes the needs of working families. Uh, but we also need local officials to prioritize work, housing for working families over vacation homes and McMansions, which primarily benefit white folks. So the people who work in our community should be able to live here. And we know that a substantial proportion of Central Oregon's homeless population is in fact the working poor. I work with people who only have a home in the winter and live out in a tent in the summer. These are our neighbors. We need to work together to make a place for, oh, sorry, Joanne. Por supuesto que estoy uh, contra esto y pensé que ya la Corte de Suprema había hablado sobre este tema. Uh, este es un problema estatal y local que impacta a las comunidades vulnerables, a las, comuni a las familias que trabajan. Debemos invertir en las familias que trabajan y en vivienda para ellos en lugar de a, a, a alocar a, a, casas de vacaciones. Um, tenemos que trabajar para que las personas que trabajan aquí puedan vivir aquí. En Oregon Central eh, vemos que son las personas que trabajan los que están pobres y que mantienen este problema. Conozco a un señor que uh, solamente tiene uh, vivienda durante el, uh, el invierno y vive en la calle uh, el resto del año. So the people who work in our community should be able to live here. And we need to work together to make this a place where people can afford to live. And that includes mixed use housing that incorporates transportation access, child care, care options, you know, that help families work and, and raise their kids. And I know that everybody says that. But what we need to do is write our policies and our budgets to say what we, to mean what we say. Pensé um, que, bueno, las personas que viven, uh, que trabajan aquí, merecen poder vivir aquí. Eso significa que tenemos que tener a vivi vivienda que es barata Uh, que usemos uh, también, uh, tengamos en mente la transportación, uh, viviendas que son mixtas para que uh, muchas personas puedan vivir en uh, vecindarios diversos. Uh, tenemos que, bueno, uh, uh, apoyar a las personas que están trabajando, no solamente con pólizas, pero también con uh, el, el, la forma en que alocamos los dineros. Thank you, Eileen. And um, Emerson, go ahead. Thanks. Um, I, I do and I um, echo the comments of Jason and Eileen. We've created economic policies that drastically favor the rich. Sí, yo estoy de acuerdo con lo que ha dicho Jason y Eileen, uh, que no está bien criminalizar a las personas sin hogar y que hemos creado policías. Y, y hemos creado pólizas que ayudan a esta diferencia económica. Oh, I can move up here. Um, yet we give tickets and jail our houseless population knowing that they can't afford to pay um, these uh, ridiculous fines. Le damos uh, multas y mandamos a la cárcel a gente que no tiene dinero y que está pasando por este problema y sabemos que eso contribuye al problema. 
So um, I agree with Jason and Eileen when we talk about zoning and um, affordable housing and workforce housing issues. Um, and two other legislative policies that we can push forward are the one system. Yo estoy de acuerdo con Eileen y con Jason de que tenemos que cambiar el, las zonas de nuestras tierras para que podamos um, hacer viviendas uh, de, bajo, uh, de bajo costo. Uh, pero también eh, apoyo la uh, proposición uno. Which is a, uh, is a system whereby you can put multiple services into one software system and this uh, better serves the community. And the second is the turnkey project uh, that uh, Representative Kenny Geyer is putting forward where we would buy up hotels um, and use them for COVID and then transition them to affordable housing so we have an asset instead of renter liabilities. Y esa iniciativa uno nos habla de un sistema múltiple que ayuda a dar estos servicios. Uh, Emerson, would you repeat the last end? Sorry. Yeah, so the, the, the turnkey project um, would be uh, the, the state buying up hotels to turn them into right now where we could isolate COVID patients um, safely, and then they would be an asset to turn into affordable housing later on. Y, y el otro uh, iniciativa que yo apoyo es el uh, turnkey o darle la vuelta a la llave en donde uh, en estos momentos se está usando dinero para apoyar a las personas que tienen COVID uh, en donde se quedan en hoteles. Pero estos hoteles se pueden convertir en uh, viviendas de bajos recursos en el futuro. Thanks so much, uh, Emerson. And um, I'm going to select the next question. We have about um, 15 minutes left of this portion, is that correct, Joanne? We end at 7. Um, I believe it is um, 5.30 to 7, so yes. That's All right. Minutes. Great. So our next question is question number 7. Um, yes, okay. Um, this country has a long history of excluding marginalized groups from conversations about development and infrastructure in communities, yet these groups are frequently the most impacted by such decisions. What are your strategies for making community members impacted by land use and development decisions, as well as by houselessness, difficulties in accessing affordable housing, as well as inaccessibility to public transportation and bike routes by part of this work? How do we amplify the voices of these same groups, which are drowned out by majority group opinions, comfortable with, oh, comfortable with not acknowledging and addressing these issues? Um, este país tiene una historia uh, de excluir a grupos marginalizados de conversaciones sobre el desarrollo. ¿Cuáles son sus estrategias para asegurarse que estos grupos, aquellos impactados por falta de vivienda y otros servicios públicos, sean parte de este trabajo? ¿Cómo amplificaría las voces que no se escuchan entre la mayoría? And I will begin with uh, Eileen. Oh, there I am. Okay. Um, so I, I mentioned before the housing is both a state and a local issue because we need funding for these issues to come from the state. And in particular, that's going to be transportation and housing bonds are what we need. Um, but also very importantly, we have citizens groups that are supposed to be advising our local governments. Um, unfortunately, what tends to happen is the best connected are involved and um, or get the microphone the most. And we need to find ways to make sure that people who are being impacted by the decision have priority over people who just don't want it in their neighborhood, I guess is the best way for me to put it. Um, and so, one lo, que hemos visto, lo que hemos visto es que este es un problema local y estatal. Y que a nivel estatal vamos a necesitar um, fondos de un bond de transportación y de vivienda. Um, vemos que hay grupos de ciudadanos que dan consejo, que dan uh, guianza a nuestro gobierno pero muchas veces estos grupos uh, están uh, compuestos por personas con conexiones 
y las personas que son impactadas por los problemas no tienen una voz que sea escuchada. También es importante que nos demos cuenta de que um, significa que nuestros vecindarios van a cambiar uh, si a veces no lo queremos así. We have to make, uh, we have to remember that everything that we do to make these functions, whether it's housing, public transportation, um, walkable and bikeable neighborhoods, these things that make it more accessible for low income families or, um, or people of color, make it accessible for all of us. This is an advantage for all of us to listen to this perspective and not be stuck in the idea of having two cars and a house that's a driving distance away. Um, but the other, uh, I'm going to let you do that, Joanne. I've got one more point. Uh, entonces, eso es importante que nos demos cuenta, ¿no? De que esto es un problema de accesibilidad para todos. Debemos crear vecindarios donde las personas tengan acceso al transporte, a caminar, a poder conectarse y de que esto es una ventaja para todos. No solamente para las personas que deciden tener dos automóviles y una vivienda grande. I'll just uh, quickly add, um, everyone will get a minute and a half for this. It's a pretty complex question. So um, just, yeah, you can uh, finish up. Eileen, you have about 30 seconds. Right. Well, the last point that I want to make is we also need to make sure that our government is more representative, representative of our communities. Um, as long as we have a very white legislator, county, legislature, county commission, and city councils, it is going to be harder for those other voices to be heard. It's important for us to embrace campaign finance reform and election reform to break down the barriers that prevent people who aren't wealthy white folks from running for, off, running for office. I know Emerson is, is with me on this particular issue. I think it's obscene the amount of money that people have to raise and spend in order to get elected. And that's a significant detriment to anybody that does not have the access that most of our elected officials have. Entonces, pues sí nos damos cuenta de que también es importante ver el impacto de nuestro condado a nuestros comisionados del condado y nuestros consejeros de la ciudad. Uh, yo apoyo uh, la reforma del de financiamiento de campañas uh, porque cuesta mucho dinero uh, correr para oficina. Uh, Emerson ha conversado conmigo de que hay que recoger mucho dinero y se um, gasta mucho dinero. Entonces, esto crea una barrera para personas de color para que puedan participar. Uh, thanks, Eileen. Um, I'm going to hand it off to Emerson, and you'll have two minutes just for fairness on everybody's end. So, go ahead. Uh, thanks. So, I, I really agree with Eileen when we're talking about money equaling access on issues like this. Um, I think if you look at the last walkout, um, and the influence that Timber Unity had in that, um, in that dis legislative decision process, it's hard to imagine that they would have had that much power without the money they possess. Entonces, bueno, sí, yo estoy en acuerdo con Aileen de que el dinero es igual al acceso. Y lo vimos en la última uh, sesión de legislatura cuando nuestros uh, representantes salieron, se fueron y el grupo Timber Unity tuvo mucho impacto en ellos, mucha influencia. Um, to be clear, my opponent supports Timber Unity and they have a long record of being uh, racist, sexist, homophobic, and anti-Semitic. Um, y para ponerlo en el record, mi oponente um, es uh, apoyado por Timber Unity, que tiene una larga historia de ser racista, sexista, um, homophobic, homophobia también. Uh, so additionally, I mean, when we talk about some of these projects, um, like the east-west connection um, with a bike lane, um, but that's a great example of what has been needed infrastructure-wise um, to help our community. But if we look on a statewide basis, I think, like I was talking before, the Al um, Albina Vision Project is such a great example. Entonces, cuando vemos aquí localmente el proyecto de este a oeste 
de bicicleta que conecta, es uno de esos pro programas de infraestructura que necesitamos. Y cuando hablamos de a nivel estatal, vemos el albaino, el, 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 el proyecto albaino. Um, so this, this happens in our community, but it, it you know, for example, uh, that, that neighborhood was a black neighborhood for a long time. And the I-5 the I project, they were going to run right through where the middle school was without, with input from the community, but they didn't take that input remotely seriously. Entonces, lo que vemos es que se fue un vecindario um, de mucha historia de la, de la comunidad negra uh, que fue impactado por un proyecto en donde se quería poner a la, um, um, a la carretera de I-5 uh, a través de la escuela media. And it took all of this, this reckoning for our democratic governor to really take this seriously. So we can't say that it's just that Democrats don't, are not guilty of this too. Uh, so in their uh, Albina vision, they've put forth an eight, like an eight step plan of what real inclusion looks like. And I'm happy to drop that in the comments and that's what I will be following in the legislature. Uh, entonces, pues vemos que uh, inclusive nuestros líderes uh, como la gobernadora uh, tuvieron que escuchar después de mucha actividad de la comunidad. Entonces es importante nos damos cuenta que eh, inclusive demócratas también uh, pueden causar este problema. El, uh, el proyecto Albaino um, eh, tiene muchas recomendaciones y uh, se va a poner en el chat para poder compartir con la comunidad. And just to be clear, I think this is a really perfect example of what this looks like. This happens in our community, but it's just a really well-documented example of, of what this jurisdictional road issue looks like. Y bueno, eso es algo que pasa en la comunidad, pero esto es un muy buen ejemplo de cómo las jurisdicciones de la carretera impactan a comunidades de color. All right, thanks so much, Emerson. And uh, Jason, please go ahead. I think you're still on mute, Jason, um, or you might be having some technical difficulties. Hi, uh, can you hear me? So I'm having some technical difficulties, which is going to play into the point I'm about to make. So I look at these infrastructure projects, especially in our community, as being really critical for our town's future. What's our transportation system going to look like? What's our housing system going to look like? So if you think about the city of Bend, right, how we make decisions, you have an elected officials, you have advisory committees, and you have public meetings. And if you think about that in a vacuum, that system makes sense. But when you realize a lot of those um, advisory committees are not accessible to a wide range of people in this community, a lot of those meetings are held at times where uh, people are working. Entonces vemos aquí, por ejemplo, en la ciudad de Ben, uh, que los programas de infraestructura son críticos, uh, ya sea transportación o vivienda, uh, pero vemos que las decisiones están hechas por nuestros um, oficiales electos eh, a través de reuniones públicas y a través de comités. Pero los comités no son accesibles a los miembros de la comunidad por el, la hora en que pasan, uh, y porque pues uh, personas están trabajando. And so when you have language barriers or transportation barriers or childcare barriers or technology barriers like I just had, you're not gonna you're not going to get the full range of voices in our community heard when we're making really important decisions about our future. Entonces cuando tenemos barreras como de lenguaje, de transportación, de cuidado de niños o barreras tecnológicas como yo lo tuve ahorita, vemos que no todos los miembros de nuestra comunidad pueden participar igualmente para representar sus necesidades. So, uh, I support breaking down, identifying and breaking down those barriers, but more important than that, reaching out to our marginalized communities, making sure they have real voice in these decisions, making sure they're part of the decision-making process. 
And if we include the voices of our marginalized communities, we will make better decisions about infrastructure and our large public spending projects that are going to serve a wider range of our communities. Sí, yo veo, um, uh, yo me comprometo a identificar y romper estas barreras. Uh, me comprometo a tener, uh, uh, a crear um, espacios para que las voces reales de comunidades marginalizadas puedan participar en el proceso de decisión para que puedan ellos guiar uh, el proceso de decisión. Thanks so much, Jason. Um, and there is a little bit of conversation happening in the comments. Just want to um, say that uh, this question around infrastructure and, and uh, really keeping those voices from marginalized communities out of important conversations uh, about development um, is something that, uh, you know, a few people have experienced um, in where they've grown up throughout the country. So um, yeah, definitely a very big problem. Um, we have, it's 6.28, so we have time for one more question, um, I believe. Um, so I will be selecting that one, and then we're going to um, go into Q&A. So the last one of our preset questions for this first part of the panel are, is um, question number eight. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic um, made it visible that Oregon is not prepared to respond to a crisis in a way that all members of the community are included and cared for. What investments and policies would you lead in the House and Senate to ensure that, with or without a crisis, non-English speakers and other marginalized communities are receiving timely communication, ongoing engagement, and investment? La pandemia de COVID-19 um, eh, hizo visible que Oregón no está preparado para responder en, a una crisis de una forma que todos los miembros de una comunidad sean incluidos y cuidados. ¿Qué uh, inversiones y, po y políticas eh, lideraría usted en, um, en el Senado y en la Casa de Representantes para asegurar que, con o sin una crisis, eh, personas uh, que no hablan el inglés y también miembros de otras comunidades marginalizadas eh, reciban comunicación a tiempo um, y sean involucradas continuamente. Um, and I will begin uh, this one with uh, Jason. Um, all right, I'll keep it short since we have time crunch. So we uh, were not prepared for this pandemic and we had um, public health officials telling us and warning us of the potential of a uh, pandemic in the near future. And we're not prepared because we didn't listen to our health professionals and our science and we didn't listen to the science and we underinvested in public health for years and years and years. You know, everything we know, well, sorry, I was trying to be quick. Entonces, bueno, sí, lo que hemos visto es que no estamos preparados. Uh, no estamos preparados en el aspecto de la salud pública. No escuchamos a los científicos y a los doctores. And so, you know, I, I think two of the big lessons from from COVID or, or two of, of the lessons from COVID is one, when people have access to information uh, during challenging times, that it helps reduce anxiety and helps families and people be able to plan. Entonces, una, hemos visto dos lecciones que ayudan. La primera es que cuando las personas tienen acceso a información, uh, se baja la ansiedad y uh, la pasan mejor. And especially when we're trying to help people be prepared to be safe, we need to make sure that we are communicating that uh, in as many different ways as possible so there's no barriers based on language or technology or anything of the sort. Entonces, cuando vemos que la prioridad es que las personas se mantengan a salvo, debemos comunicar esto de muchas medidas. Um, no solamente uh, en varios idiomas, pero... De, uh, con muchas formas para que podamos, uh, para que el mensaje pueda llegar a todos. And, you know, when we're, when we, you know, one of the lessons we're going to learn from this is that we need to make real investments in public, in public health services. And we need to make investments in culturally responsive services so that everybody has equitable access to those really, really critical health services. Entonces, lo que hemos visto es que vamos a necesitar crear, um, um, Vamos a tener que poner fondos reales 
en, to, en, en lo que es la salud pública y los servicios que son ap apropiados culturalmente para que las personas puedan recibir uh, y tener acceso a esta ayuda. Thanks so much, Jason. Um, and I'll hand the mic over to um, Eileen, please. Thanks. So Jason brought up an important point about the language. Um, you know, our initial guidance from Salem was entirely in English, um, which leaves out all of the communities for whom English is not their primary language. Um, and when we don't have life-saving documents available, in the person's native language, that makes it much more difficult to get correct information out. And part of managing a crisis is managing correct information to help people. Um, I am hoping to serve. A, Hemos visto a, que el mensaje que salió de Salem salió todo en inglés. Y esto deja a todos los miembros de la comunidad que no hablan inglés afuera. Entonces, estos documentos que son hechos para salvar vidas deben estar en el lenguaje que las personas puedan ser más receptivos. Okay. This is particularly important that we learn these lessons in Central Oregon. Because in the event of the Cascadia subduction zone, which has a non-zero chance of happening this year, but it is 2020, let's wait. Um, but it is definitely going to happen sometime in the next 150 years. Central Oregon is the recovery zone for the western part of the state. Entonces, eh, hemos visto um, que estas lecciones son muy importantes en el centro de Oregon porque también podemos tener otras emergencias como uh, la subducción de la zona de las cascadas. Um, que es un área um, um, de, uh, uh, tectónica de nuestra área. Y vemos que el área del de, centro de Oregon es esa área de evacuación donde las personas vendrán por refugio. We need to be prepared to meet the needs of people from a variety of cultures all over the state. Um, this is going to be a challenge. We need to, first of all, have investment in Central Oregon, in the infrastructure to support this, but also in the policies of how we're going to deal with a rapidly expanding population that all has different needs. Y bueno, eso lo vemos en que hay que prepararnos en una multitud de veces, uh, de formas, dándonos cuenta que todas las personas de diversas culturas deben estar protegidas y esto significa que vamos a necesitar no solamente invertir uh, pero también crear la infraestructura y las pólizas para cuidar a todos. So I'm hoping to serve on the Veterans and Emergency Preparedness uh, Committee in the State Senate specifically so that I can help shape these policies so Central Oregon is ready to meet the needs. Me gustaría servir en el Comité de Veteranos y Emergencia del Senado para realmente poder ayudar a que el, uh, la área de Oregon Central esté preparada para una emergencia y para, el, um, para la recuperación. Thanks so much, Eileen. And uh, we'll finish off this first uh, part with Emerson. Thank you. I agree with Jason and Eileen of our failure to invest in our public health system and our failure to communicate um, this crisis effectively. Um, I'm going to actually, again, drop, drop another document into the comments put together by the World Health Organization. And to me, I think it's the best example that I've seen of the failures that we learned that first month. And it, it addresses every um, type of marginalized community. Uh, I'm sure there's more, but it's pretty exhaustive. Bueno, yo estoy también de acuerdo con Aileen en que, bueno, eh, las personas uh, de la comunidad uh, están siendo marginalizadas. Y yo voy a, a poner aquí en los comentarios un documento de la World Health Organization, la Organización Mundial de la Salud, que habla de cómo podemos atender a personas de diversas culturas. And also, I feel that the COVID showed us how fragile our child care system was. Um, specifically, our ECE program that has hours around the clock 
um, how fragile and underinvested this program is. Y COVID nos ha enseñado que nuestros programas de cuidado de niños están muy mal, están um, en donde no tienen la suficiente apoyo y fondos para salir adelante. Our underinvestment in our children and our education system was not able to withstand the shock of COVID, and that's why we need to do better. Y bueno, hemos visto que la falta de inversión en nuestro sistema de cuidado de niños ha dejado el sistema de cuidado de niños en shock y uh, va a ser muy difícil recuperarnos después del COVID. All right, uh, thank you so much uh, to um, our candidates here. I'm going to open the floor now um, to any of the participants from our BIPOC community. Um, if you have any questions um, you'd like to ask, um, please feel free to unmute yourself and you know ask the question directly um, as you choose. Thanks. Siempre tenemos un momento donde todos están tímidos. We always have a shy moment where people don't uh, want to ask questions. Um, so yo voy a preguntar una, por favor. I will ask a question. Um, uh, sabemos que las licencias para todos entrarán en vigencia el uh, primero de enero del 2021. ¿Qué recomendación le da usted a las personas que tienen miedo de aplicar porque sienten que su información no va a estar segura con el gobierno del estado. Uh, we know that the driver's licenses for all is going to take effect January 1st, 2021. What message do you send to community members that may be afraid um, to apply for the driver's license because um, they're concerned that their information uh, could be shared and they could be vulnerable? And anyone can jump in to, you know, answer the question if you'd like. Yeah. I, uh, go ahead, Jason. No, please go ahead, Emerson. I was going to say, I think this is a very legitimate concern and not something that we can address on the legislative level that, um, we are we are a sanctuary city or a sanctuary state, and we don't we don't provide information to ICE, um, and I, we would need to make sure. And again, I don't have the details on if this is already codified. Making sure that that is codified, uh, the, the no the no sharing of information, and assign that to some type of penalty. Uh, but I think it's naive of us to not really appreciate the um, the seriousness uh, and, and of people's fears. Um, and we can do what we can legislatively, but the climate is. Um, with this president is 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 tense, and I, I can appreciate why people don't trust the government right now. Bueno, uh, lo primero que tenemos que observar es que esto es un hecho, un, un, un problema que está a nivel federal y estatal. Desde parte del estado, uh, somos un estado santuario, entonces um, no he tenido la oportunidad de verificar, pero hay que verificar si tenemos el código escrito para asegurarnos de que a los miembros de la comunidad estén protegidos, porque no, el Estado no debe compartir información, uh, pero yo entiendo que con uh, el, el, el presidente que tenemos en estos momentos, uh, muchas personas uh, tienen duda. Um, just want to um, shout out to Naomi, I believe you raised your hand, I don't know if you wanted to add to that or if it was a question to follow this. Totally different question, so I'll wait until we're finished with this one. All right. Uh, I don't know if uh, Jason, if you wanted to respond. Yeah, no, and I'll, I'll, I'll be brief. You know, it, that I support that law. You know, it's, it is um, a step in the right direction, but if people do not feel comfortable or safe um, going in to get a driver's license or an identification, then it kind of defeats the purpose. You know, we are a sanctuary state, and I, and I support that as well, obviously. But I think one of the shortcomings that we saw in the most recent incident with ICE in our town is really diving down to what does that mean? What are our policies and procedures mm -hmm. um, in place when it comes to either sharing information from a driver's license or when, when federal agents show up in our, in our community? We need real rulemaking 
about how we're going to protect um, people who live in our community. And when we make those rules and that rulemaking, we got to make sure that that information is shared with people so they feel safe here in, here in Oregon. Um, bueno, yo, um, yo apoyo esa medida. Um, creo que es un paso en, el, en una buena dirección um, y que, pues, um, la verdad, si las personas no aplican, pues, um, se pierde ese avance, ese trabajo que se ha hecho. Uh, yo creo que es muy importante que hablemos de cómo esta iniciativa se traduce al día a día para que tengamos realmente... Uh, procesos que nos den, uh, que protejan ¿no? a las personas cuando estén los agentes federales o cuando saquen su licencia. And I'm going to agree there. It was, it's a law that was created with the best of intentions, um, but no one actually anticipated how difficult the Trump administration was going to make everything. Um, which means that we have to write better laws that have, uh, I guess, articles and specifications is the best way I can put it. Um, that really clarifies the punishments, uh, the penalties rather for sharing information. Um, because we have these protections, but we really don't have the teeth to do anything if an individual bad actor within the system shares this information. Pues, uh, yo estoy de acuerdo de que esta ley se hizo con la mejor de las intenciones, uh, pero que es difícil con esta administración que tenemos. Entonces, es importante de que no solamente escribamos la ley, pero que tengamos artículos y especificaciones que le dan multa a las personas que, uh, a estos uh, actores malos que comparten la información y que hacen cosas que no deben hacer. Uh, thank you all. Um, Naomi, please go ahead, ask your question. So thank you all for this information because um, I come from, from out of state. I am one of those dreadful Californians who has made Oregon her new home. And I'm learning a lot about uh, this place, its history, and um, how that history manifests and what we see today. So when you're talking about these um, driver's licenses, I think back to the, 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 the parents who I can't have parent conferences with because they're not allowed on campus. Um, my question specifically though is, hate crimes and bias incidents have grown astronomically in our state yet many local areas lack the resources to respond to such incidents appropriately to support marginalized communities. What practical ideas do you have to ensure that those accounts are documented and what will you do with any relevant data? Um, bueno, um, yo uh, me, soy una de esas personas que se ha mudado de California a Oregon y que ha hecho Oregon su hogar y estoy aprendiendo mucho de la historia de Oregon Ahí esto de las licencias uh, me ha tocado porque he visto padres que no pueden entrar a la escuela porque no tienen la identificación. Uh, mi pregunta es con respecto a los crímenes de odio y qué se puede hacer para que las jurisdicciones pequeñas de nuestro estado tengan el apoyo para actuar contra estos actos. I don't know if any of uh, the candidates wants to jump in. Um, Joanne, I don't know if we have that question on the presentation, just so that um, uh, everyone can be able to read it um, if they'd like yeah, to. I'm looking for it right now. Okay. And, and I can, I'll, I'll go first. And, and that really great question, Naomi, especially with what we've seen um, here in our state. You know, part of it is what do, how do we, part of it is what do we want police doing and what do we want police not doing, right? We ask police officers to deal with people in mental health crisis, deal with people who are homeless, deal with people or address issues of homelessness, address issues of mental health crisis, addiction issues. 
um, when we would be better off having social services um, help those people in crisis and focus what we want uh, police officers to do. And to me, one of the things we want to do is make sure that we are fully investigating bias crimes and hate crimes and making sure people feel comfortable reaching out to the police um, to report those um, types of incidents and that those incidents are fully prosecuted here in our community. It is. Gracias, Naomi. Esta es una muy buena pregunta. Esto nos habla de qué es lo que queremos y qué es lo que no queremos que los policías hagan. Um, sabemos que los policías responden a problemas de la salud mental, a problemas de a personas que no tienen vivienda, a problemas de adicción, pero también sabemos que uh, podemos tener trabajadores sociales que uh, respondan a estos problemas para que los policías se puedan dedicar a investigaciones de crímenes de odio y se pueda dar un seguimiento a estos casos. You know, so, so part of it is creating trust between law enforcement um, and our communities of color and our marginalized communities so they, they have trust in, and they will report those types of incidents so that we can address them. And, and unfortunately, we don't have that level of of trust. I think the initial police accountability measures in these last couple of sessions are a start, but we need to do a real um, hard look at how we police our communities and, and create culture shifts in, in our police, police agencies so that we have levels of trust with, uh, with our entire community and so that these types of crimes will be reported and investigated. Mm -hmm. Entonces hemos visto que uh, para esto necesitamos uh, la confianza de las comunidades de color y otras comunidades marginalizadas para que cuando sean víctimas de un um, crimen de odio lo reporten, se pueda hacer algo al respecto y haya uh, responsabilidad, uh, que las personas culpables tomen responsabilidad. Pero eso empieza con la cultura que tienen la, los, los departamentos de policía y um, el acto en sí de investigar y ver a las personas, ¿no? El... Es importante de que uh, se crean a uh, de orden donde el comienzo y necesitamos hablar más de cómo cambiar esa cultura policial. Um, thank you so much. Um, I don't know if uh, we have any other questions um, that any of our... Um, Would, oh. Yeah, I'd hope that there was, um, there are best practices in other communities um, that we can capture in Bend and throughout Oregon. Um, you know, I can't imagine what this feels like to be a victim of this. Um, the only thing I can think of is that one of the things that has made sex crime easier to report for women is that the system has accepted a need for advocacy for the victim. Um, and perhaps one of the things that we need to look at is advocacy for the victim in the event of a hate crime so that it doesn't disappear into the system so that that data remains separate and then we actually can start collecting good data um, to change our policies and change our our policing practices to make sure that these Entonces, lo que hemos visto, lo que necesitamos ver también son las mejores prácticas de otros otras comunidades Uh, y saber qué es lo que ellos están haciendo que está funcionando. No me puedo imaginar ser a la víctima de un crimen de odio y no poder tener abogacía. Lo vemos uh, cuando um, a, las, las, a las mujeres o las personas que sufren de violencia doméstica uh, tienen abogacía, pueden entonces um, uh, hacer investigaciones y esa información no se pierde. Entonces yo creo que es Importante tener abogacía para las personas que sufren uh, crímenes de odio para que esa información no desaparezca y para que se pueda recoger esa información uh, y hacer reportes. Um, Kathy, to, 
Um, can I add her? Yeah, go ahead, Emerson. Uh, Naomi, that um, the reporting system is exactly something they talked about in the legislature in the last special second se second session. Uh, I want to say it's like legislative concept seventeen, but don't quote me on that. Um, and they couldn't come to a decision around that outside reporting um, and our reporting mechanisms. We know that's really important when we see what's happening in Pineville and on Deschutes County. I mean, that's a top down problem. Um, and so there needs to be an outside accountability uh, mm -hmm. because otherwise there's no, there's going to be no accountability. But I know that is still in the works and I know that Representative Bynum is still holding um, meetings regarding that very specific issue. Um, and also following, uh, I think the Kahoot system in Eugene is really freaking fabulous. Oops, sorry, Joanne. I just went off on a tangent. <laughs> Uh, bueno, entonces, uh, nada más para añadir, uh, sí es importante tener un sistema de uh, reportar estos uh, crímenes y lo vemos, ¿no? Que es importante uh, tener un sistema uh, que sea legítimo en donde se pueda hacer esta investigación. Vemos aquí en las áreas de Primeville y de Oregon Central que el las decisiones se toman de arriba para abajo, entonces es importante que tengamos investigaciones exteriores uh, de una, uh, un grupo exterior para que haya realmente responsabilidad, para que se pueda uh, a poner responsabilidad en esas personas que están encargadas de, um, de um, afrontar estos problemas de, de um, uh, crímenes de odio. Uh, también vemos el sistema de CAHOOTS, ¿no? que es muy bueno. Uh, y para los que no saben, CAHOOTS es un sistema en donde uh, personas que no son policías responden a problemas de salud mental. I think the CAHOOTS is a great example of what happens when we uh, don't, when uh, not officers, uh, so whatever the correct phrase is, go to situations without guns. Um, not only is it saving the city money, but it is leading to far less conflict and way more uh, de-escalated de conflict. I think it's a great model to follow. Entonces, bueno, lo que vemos con el sistema de Kahoot es que es un gran ejemplo en donde personas responden a problemas, pero sin armas. Entonces, cuando no tienen armas, um, es más seguro para la comunidad se ahorra dinero y uh, se practican esas técnicas de descargar una un conflicto. Thanks so much. Um, we have time for about one more question. Um, if anyone on um, our panel uh, would like to um, unmute and go ahead and ask. Well, doesn't look, um, oh. Um, so I put up in the wait, screen our- and Before we finish up, there's a question in the comments. Um, and this is from uh, Pixie Lighthorse. Hello, I am an indigenous farmer and rancher in Redmond and very grateful this is taking place today. Thank you, Joanne, for putting this together. Um, if there, is time today, please respond to the following. What will be done the next time ICE comes into our community? How will it be different from the recent surprise attack? What will your response be? Uh, this will begin to build trust if we know what the plan will be. Um, Pixie Lighthorse, que es un miembro de la comunidad que vive en Redmond y es indígena y granjera, nos pregunta ¿Qué va a ser la próxima respuesta cuando los agentes de inmigración estén en nuestra comunidad? ¿Cuál es el plan? Porque si las personas saben el plan, van a estar, uh, van a tener más confianza en los líderes. Um, I can, I can, I'll give this a shot. Um, it's a difficult question to answer because it exceeds the state's power because it is a federal overreach. Um, but as far as a legislator, I was there, I was standing next to Jason and definitely have our solidarity 
on that. Um, but as far as power to prevent it, I wish I wish we had some kind of power um, to prevent it. Um, I think that article by Eric King kind of gives an idea of what could happen in the future, but it's a really tough question to answer because we have a president that um, doesn't seem to understand um, the Tenth Amendment. Entonces, bueno, um, yo uh, puedo decir que esto es un, uh, un problema uh, federal, entonces tenemos barreras en lo que podemos hacer a nivel estatal, pero sí es un alcance uh, extra de los agentes federales. Uh, tengo solidaridad con la comunidad y yo estuve allí ese día. Um, en estos momentos uh, vimos que el artículo del el gerente de la ciudad, Eric King, nos dio una idea de lo que puede pasar en el futuro, pero es muy difícil saber porque tenemos una administración que no respeta el, el amendment número 10. I think the community did the best it could, which was to delay as much as possible so that attorneys could show up to provide due process. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't successful, so uh, maybe one of the things we can do is, is get the appropriate attorneys on call for the next time it will happen. Um, and we can't assume it won't happen again. But what we really need is um, a change in our immigration law, which has to be done at the federal level, um, which means that we absolutely must vote out the current occupant of the White House and we must change the balance of power in, this, in the U.S. Senate. Entonces, lo que vemos es que, uh, pues, uh, la comunidad hizo lo mejor que pudo. La comunidad retrasó a los agentes de inmigración uh, para que se le puedan, uh, a las personas, contactar con un abogado y para que puedan tener ese proceso legal adecuado. Entonces, uh, la respuesta sería tener uh, abogados uh, en llamada uh, o on call, no esperando para que puedan ser uh, mandados en estos momentos y ayudar a reforzar las, uh, los derechos de las comunidades de migrantes. Pero sabemos que esto, para esto, la ley de inmigración federal debe cambiar um, y debemos votar a la persona que está en la Casa Blanca, así como también a uh, tener un Senado uh, the Senate passed meaningful immigration reform in 2010, and due to partisanship on the part of John Boehner, who was then the, pro uh, the Speaker of the House, it was not allowed to pass in the House. So this could have been resolved 10 years ago, and we would have saved so many lives and so much heartache if we had. Um, I think that the only way that we're going to really resolve this is to have a democratically controlled Senate and House and push them hard to make immigration reform a principal um, issue. It needs to get to the front of the line because we cannot keep fighting this issue that we should have resolved 10 years ago. Um, uh, entonces, lo que necesitamos es una reforma migratoria que realmente uh, sea comprensiva y lo vimos en el 2010 uh, cuando John Boehner fue el, um, um, el líder de la, uh, de la casa, Cámara de Representantes, pero esta legislación no pasó de la Cámara de Representantes. Entonces es importante que tengamos un Senado y una Cámara de Representantes demócrata y empujarlos para que ellos pongan este uh, uh, um, uh, proyecto de inmigración uh, al principio de la línea como una prioridad. Yeah, I, um, I mean, great, great question, obviously very timely, and I, I'm not going to repeat what Emerson and um, Eileen said, of course, vote for Joe Biden is a, a big step. You know, I, I, one of the issues right now is that we're deconstructing what it means to be a sanctuary city. Like, what does it mean for to not help or assist with federal ICE agents? And I, and I, and I think part of the struggle that we're having right now is we didn't have really clear guidelines of what our police do or do not do, or a city does or does not do when ICE agents are in our community. 
And I think we need to have really clear guidelines about what actions are, or no, or what actions our police are going to take or not going to take when that happens. So we don't have sort of the deconstruction that we're having right now or that, or that confusion um, and not a sort of a unified response when I shows up. You know, it, it might seem unlike I'm on our parks board and it might seem, well, Joanne, I'll let you go first. Entonces, yo creo que lo importante primero es uh, votar por Joe Biden como presidente, uh, porque debemos de construir uh, qué significa ser uh, santuario, ¿no? Lo que vimos fue que no tuvimos uh, guías claras en qué debemos y no debemos hacer. Entonces, es muy importante que tengamos eh, y que creemos, que creamos esas guías claras para saber uh, qué es el uh, involucramiento y cuáles son las actividades que nuestros agentes deben tener. And I was just saying, you know, I'm, I serve on our parks board, which is a separate uh, government um, district, and, and we have directed our executive director to come up with, with uh, guidelines and rules and policies so in the event that ICE shows up on, on park property. And I think every government agency here in our community needs to do that so that we have a set response when, if, if and when ICE agents show up. Bueno, yo en estos momentos uh, uh, soy parte de la, um, el consejo de uh, los parques y nosotros le hemos pedido al director ejecutivo que crea uh, una guía clara de cómo los parques van a responder si alguna vez hay un agente de inmigración uh, aprendiendo a personas en nuestros parques. Y yo creo que es importante que todas las instituciones tengan unas guías claras de cómo van a interactuar y qué se debe hacer cuando ICE está presente. Can I do a follow-up question? Go for it, Joanne. Last question. Mi pregunta es de seguimiento. Um, do you support um, legal advocacy and, 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 and funds to uh, help immigrants and all marginalized community members that don't have access to attorneys. You mentioned that we should have attorneys on call and ready to help uphold their rights. So do you commit to um, investing in that? Entonces mi pregunta es, ¿se comprometen ustedes a invertir en um, abogados para personas marginalizadas y otras personas que no tienen acceso a abogados? Yes, we have a constitutional right to representation and due process. And that is not based on citizenship. We have determined over and over again that the Constitution applies to everyone on our soil and American citizens all over the world. So if you're here, you have the right to representation and due process. And that is a flaw in Oregon system, the way we handle our um, public defender system. This is something that we need to improve. And doing so is not just for the benefit of immigration, it is also for the benefit of all Oregonians because justice denied for any of us makes us all less. Sí, yo apoyo porque uh, la Constitución nos dice que todos los miembros de la comunidad tienen derecho a representados y a tener un proceso legal justo. Entonces, no hay que ser ciudadano, esto aplica a todos los miembros de la comunidad y es nuestro derecho tener representantes y tener un proceso legal justo. Um, eh, vemos que um, cuando hacemos esto, todos los miembros de la comunidad se van a beneficiar um, de tener estos defensores legales públicos y este es un, uh, un problema de justicia donde la justicia debe ser para todos. Just, uh, yes, I agree with what Eileen said, and I think it's an important distinction that the cruelty written into our immigration policy is by design, and it's not that old. Um, this, is, this is language and a process that was intentional, and we have to be just as an unintentional to um, create a system whereby we have laws, but laws that are actually, that are not inhumane and um, are just. 
Sí, yo estoy de acuerdo con lo que Eileen ha dicho, de que este um, no solamente uh, tiene los derechos, pero este sistema es cruel y ha sido creado de esa manera. Uh, ha sido creado y diseñado para perpetuar esa crueldad. Uh, entonces, si el lenguaje y los procesos son intencionales para crear esa crueldad, también tenemos que tener lenguajes y procesos intencionales para proteger a los miembros de la comunidad. Uh, no, I was just I was just having this conversation with an immigration attorney in, in town. The difference between the work I do in the criminal justice system, where people who are charged with crime have a right to an attorney and are appointed are appointed an attorney by the court, compared in, in her world in the immigration world, where that doesn't that doesn't happen. You know, there are widespread barriers to legal representation in all different types of situations in this in this. Um, state in this country that perpetuate inequities and when so people don't have access to legal representation it doesn't create real access to to justice you know i think king county could potentially be a model for us they i want to say it was in 2016 or 17 uh granted several million dollars to nonprofit law firms that help people with immigration issues um And we don't quite have that infrastructure here in Bend as far as nonprofit law firms that, that do that kind of work, but we do have those types of firms and organizations in Oregon. But I think we can figure out other creative ways to help create legal defense funds um, for people to make sure that they have an attorney by their side when they're going through um, deportation proceedings and other immigration proceedings. Sí, he tenido una conversación reciente con un abogado. Uh, yo trabajo en el sistema criminal y este abogado trabaja en el sistema de inmigración y vemos que uh, como yo trabajo en el sistema criminal, las, eh, la corte le proporciona un abogado a las personas uh, y vemos que el sistema de inmigración uh, no hace eso. Entonces hay real, reales uh, barreras que perpetúan esta inigualdad y vemos que cuando no hay acceso a los servicios legales, no hay acceso a la justicia. Entonces tenemos que ver uh, uh, soluciones. Sabemos que hay uh, un condado que ha invertido en organizaciones sin fines de lucro que proveen ayuda financiera, um, perdón, que proveen uh, ayuda legal uh, a miembros de la comunidad. Entonces eh, el, el, este condado um, ha invertido en que los, uh, uh, los abogados estén disponibles para las personas y queremos ver cómo podemos crear eso en nuestra región también. All right, thank you everyone so much. Muchas gracias a todos. Um, we have some information here on the screen um, about um, elections. Um, so election day is uh, November 3rd of this year. Um, 20 days before that, um, the deposit, uh, the list of the deposit boxes um, will be published and the voter registration deadline is October 13th. Um, aquí um, en la pantalla puede ver un poco de información sobre um, las elecciones de este año. Uh, la elección es el 3 de noviembre. Uh, la lista de las cajas de depósitos será publicada 20 días antes del 3 de noviembre y Um, la fecha, la última fecha para poder registrarse para votar es el 13 de octubre. Um, uh, so for more information, para más información puede visitar a la página de Indivisible Bend um, y también en Facebook um, la página de Indivisible Bend. Uh, también uh, uniéndose a esto fue um, el grupo del uh, Vocal Seniority. Um, so for more information, you can visit um, the pages of the Vocal Seniority Indivisible Band, um, both websites and also their Facebook pages. Um, I just want to say once again, thank you to all of our um, uh, panelists present here today and also to our candidates. Um, I thought it was a really great discussion and it was fantastic to just be able to, um, as you know, as face to face as possible during COVID times to have uh, this opportunity to hear from you um, and uh, really just Thanks for communicating um, with all of us here.
Uh, Joanne, if you'd like to. Dar las gracias a todos los panelistas, a todos los candidatos que nos han acompañado. Esta ha sido una reunión muy informativa y muy bonita. Le agradecemos a los candidatos, pero también a las miembros de la comunidad que se han unido. Uh, y bueno, uh, manténgase en contacto. Stay tuned. Indivisible Ben has a lot more information uh, ready for elections so that you can learn and participate. Eh, el Indivisible de Ben tiene mucha más información para que usted pueda aprender y participar. Uh, entonces, pues recuerda hacer su voz escuchada, su voz cuenta. Remember to make your voice heard, your voice count. Sí se puede. Y nos vemos la próxima. We'll see each other next time. Hasta luego. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone.